morning this is Brian with Forest Hills Memorials and it is Monday and uh, that means I am on my way to Georgia so left I don't know about 45 minutes ago my uh, map here shows I got a little under eight hours uh, ahead of me so I'm staying south of Nashville Tennessee tonight um, and then I think it's only maybe a five hour drive tomorrow to uh, Alberton. So we're on the road, we made it. We're still up in Northern Illinois. It's uh, 25 degrees out right now. I know my final destination, uh, we're gonna spend a week with my grandparents down in Florida after this Georgia trip. And yesterday it was 85 down there. So heading to warmer weather, that's for sure. Uh, so I got all my stuff up here got the the coffee for the for the drive and That is basically going to be today the drive uh, probably some some rest area stops uh, And cruise until we hit the hotel staying at a uh, Holiday Inn Express tonight um, So and it, it shows if I don't stop I should get there around 4 p.m. Uh, and as of right now, so 563 miles left to go. Uh, my full tank on this truck will go about 500 miles. It's saying I've got about 480 miles left. So definitely going to have to stop uh, once for fuel. And then uh, we should be good. So I'll touch in. Uh, and I know I'm going across a couple of really cool, uh, what I considered pretty cool, uh, kind of architectural things. So. I'll be going across the Illinois River and the Ohio River and the bridges on, on Interstate 39 are, are pretty cool. Um, so I'll probably slow down and uh, get the camera out for those and um, not sure what's going to be too good for today as far as content goes, but wanted to at least, uh, you know, update everybody as to where I'm at and you know the time and distance and all that stuff I'm going today for y'all's information so all right we'll check in with you uh, while I'm on the way and uh, we'll see you guys soon we made it first day in the books made it to the hotel room so that was about a nine hour drive I'm about I think about an hour um, south of Nashville made it to the room uh, I didn't know what kind of room it's got its own in a living area and <clears throat> kitchen area um, doesn't have the greatest view in the world but we're just here for the night and see the truck down there that's nice but a lot of drive-in a lot of seat time i'm going to relax it's about a quarter to six so i'm gonna get up early i'm gonna see how much longer it is to alberton and see what my check-in time is at the hotel in alberton and then kind of plan my day accordingly for uh, when i leave here so uh, gonna relax tonight and then we will see you in the morning on the road again so it's Tuesday did not sleep well last night something about you know not your home bed uh, I was up a lot I almost left at 2 o'clock this morning I was like what am I gonna do when I get there though I can't get into the hotel there till 3 p.m. so so I'm here, it's, uh, it's a little after seven, and I am uh, just letting the truck warm up a little bit. 
Uh, I got a, uh, let's see, so it's a five hour drive today. Uh, so not too bad, a lot, you know, fewer hours, fewer miles than yesterday. So, uh, and I just put in the address here. I could have went around Atlanta and went through like some, it looked like a lot of turns and like small roads and it was an extra hour and it looked like it went through some forest, like some um, like national forest type things, some parks. Uh, almost did that, but it added an hour to the trip, so I'm going to take my chances going through Atlanta. Um, I know I've been through Atlanta a bunch. It's always a traffic jam, and, you know, other than that, people are doing about 120. So uh, we're going to do that route, just take our chances, and get on the road this morning. I'm probably going to find, they had a breakfast here at the Holiday Inn, but we're probably going to find something a little bit better something better than the coffee they have here too so it's not the greatest uh so we'll find something make a stop um here in the next couple hours and uh we'll probably get to elberton a little bit early it's saying i'm gonna gain an hour so it says i'll get there 12 30 this time but it'll be 1 30 there so i'll have some time to tool around elberton too once we get there so uh we're gonna head out to Alberton, Georgia. So it was about, you know, five hour drive, six hours with the time loss. And here is the room in Alberton. Um, so we're at the, the Quality Inn. This is uh, rooms that the Monument Builders of North America had set aside for all of us that are gonna be down here. Um, so nice room. I They must have just got done cleaning because it's almost unbearable. It's like they, I think they sprayed like four cans of Lysol in here. It's really, really strong. Here's the light I'll turn on. So, other than that, uh, nice room. They, I guess they just got done remodeling this. So, not sure what I'm gonna do the rest of the day. It's just a little after three. Uh, might tool around, uh, just look at some uh, places while I'm here, just driving. So, went and picked up some uh, snacks. Um, some stuff drinks and that for uh, for the week so I'll be here today's Tuesday and I check out Sunday morning so we'll be here for for some time um, so that's about probably it for today I don't know if I'll jump back on unless I see something in my travels that's really cool so uh, if not we'll see you in the morning good morning it's Brian with Forest Hills Memorials it is a Wednesday and uh, today is kind of a free day for me, so um, I just came out this morning to uh, meet one of my suppliers, so I'm sitting here. Um, I don't know, I didn't ask them if they uh, would mind if I had the video going, so I'm going to go uh, meet with my the, the art director here, um, talk to her for a little bit. I don't know if uh, they'll want me to video, but if they don't, I will meet you back here and just kind of go over uh, everything that uh, they've got going on and then uh, otherwise I will bring you in we'll see you in a little bit <clears throat> driving around through Dalberton Georgia and you get behind <laughs> I'm not gonna be too close behind this guy he's got a bunch of looks like scrap Georgia gray pieces and there's just manufacturing granite plants all over the place so I just got done uh, with meeting with my supplier and uh, they had recommended I asked them for a, a cool cemetery to go to so Childs and Childs Granite Company was that one um, I was at another small company before that um, I'm going over by Keystone uh, Granite Supply or Granite Provider Wholesaler. Um, I'm probably going to go over to Bicknell Supply. They're an actual 
um, tool supply house. I'm gonna go over and check them out while I'm in town. Um, I just got, so Salem Stones was who I was meeting with previous to that and then we were just at another um, kind of fab shop that does all kinds of work, polishing, cutting, wire sawing. Um, they, if I can figure out how to put a picture onto the video, I will. They had a really cool uh, memorial for a, a small child. It was a completely hand sculpted uh, transformer. It was Optimus Prime on the side of a, a die for a, a child. So that was really cool. Um, so now I'm heading over, it's kind of a unique cemetery because uh, it's called Forest Hills Memorial Park and uh, you know, so that I'm going to take a video while I'm there, walk around, I guess there's some really cool unique uh, pieces that have made right here in uh, Alberton, so we'll check that out, uh, pretty cool name. I think I've actually had stuff that some of my suppliers from down here have sent there uh, since we're Forest Hills Memorials and this is Forest Hills Memorial Cemetery. Uh, so stuff's been sent to me that's supposed to go to them and then uh, stuff that's supposed to be for me has gone to them. So we've shipped stuff back and forth to each other a couple of times. So um, I talked to the manager over there at the last place I was. Uh, it wasn't Child and Child's but um they didn't mind if i videoed i don't think but they were kind of you know a little iffy so i just didn't uh so not gonna video in uh probably any of the suppliers uh workshops but we will at the cemetery i'm going to so we'll uh, check back in with you when i get there and we're here forest hills memorial park incorporated i can already tell there's a lot of gray stones out here looks like they're they're probably already cutting grass so i figured i'll i'll do a drive around and then uh it might be bumpy road here i'll do a drive around and then maybe um get out and do some walking so that looks like a hand etch scene on that Madden stone there they pretty cool so there's a black one with an apex top so yeah I thought it'd be cool to come over here and do a once around and then get out and walk around some of these uh, some of these stones and just get some I like doing this just to get some different ideas on shapes and styles you know that one that little one right there's a shape I've never seen before so again I asked this on a in another video if if you like seeing this thing and kind of going around and uh, seeing cemeteries, I enjoy walking around them. So if you want to walk around together, let me know down in the comments. I'll do a little bit more videoing of that. We have a cemetery that I go to once in a while in the Chicagoland area. Um, it's a Serbian cemetery where, you know this stone right here is pretty big that would be a small one in the Serbian cemetery they have gigantic memorials there and they're all right on top of each other right next to each other uh, so it's very hard to get in there and, and do installs but it's a really cool cemetery to walk around on so now that one looks like it was hand etched too um, so that's pretty cool Lots of gray stuff, that's for sure. And I don't know if there's something wrong with my GoPro or what, but it keeps on shutting off. So these look like they're kind of just large estate lots. 
some real big maybe we'll get out and walk here they've got um they've got kind of their center feature over there and some really cool pieces on the other side we're actually working on one like that one with the pillar so i'll uh shut this off we'll get out and walk around here okay i hope i'm not it's got to be like a maintenance shed or something hopefully so yeah that piece is enormous so is this one yeah they're already out here trimming and mowing that's wild grass isn't quite green by us yet but these guys have these full full ledgers so when you have a marker like this that covers essentially the whole grave I, we call them a ledger um, there aren't too many cemeteries in my area that allow that and you get a, you're gonna end up getting a lot of this so all of that rust and that's from a lawnmower deck scraping up against it leaving metal on it but this thing is very very large the young man that used to work for us names Tyler so I'm gonna send him a picture of that later <laughs> yeah there's some cool pieces man that piece got to be 15 feet tall all George Gray is one for the Thomas family pretty unique those flowers are amazing so we call these shaped carve when you got them, um, you want know, to you do the, all of this by hand with an air nozzle and you kind of make the flowers in that look 3D. Yeah, this is kind of the area where all the big stones are. So very simple, but elegant and classy. All unpolished, so there's no polish on this stone at all. Multiple tiers on the top. That's my problem with leaving them unpolished. Just leaves the pores open and it's a lot more susceptible to getting dirty like that. is very nice with the columns on the sides I mean that base I'm just gonna walk this off just to give you a so three six nine twelve fifteen. so this base is probably 15 feet long just to give you an idea I don't know how well that comes across on camera that's nice with the columns they've got a lot of unpolished stone here all of these are unpolished this is all unpolished you can kind of tell the ones that have been here for a little while because this is all kind of discolored and brownish on top. Their footstones are unpolished too and I've never seen a bench like that that's all unpolished. It does give it, when they're clean, it does give it a nice, you know, stately look and obviously this thing's huge. You know, I'm, I'm six foot, I can reach about seven and a half, so I would say that's eight and a half feet tall, something like that. That one, I have no idea, that thing is huge. This is cool, this is all laser etched. Just tell, bring it closer, because you can see the dots pretty good on this one. You see all the little dots in that around there the laser made still a cool piece this all still hand carved up top here you got a personal mausoleum here this is a two crypt mausoleum that's cool with the raised rounded letters so this is this is all going to be hand tooled in here as well. A really cool shape car design element. 
This must be the governor of Alberton. Put you back on the head mount here. Man. Assuming he was a sailor. Jeez. To take a picture of this one and show my grandma she likes lighthouses. The pretty cool lighthouse up there, but that thing's gotta be. <laughs> I mean, that's gotta be 16 foot tall anyway. That is wild. Show that to my grandma and let's see if she wants to get one of these for her, for her lot. <laughs> Man, all polished on the back. I wouldn't even know where to begin to install something like that. It's three pieces, but that center piece, whew. Can't be light. Another mausoleum, so your full casket. So this door will open. You can see they've got it caulked a little bit there. Uh, but that door will come off and then your casket slides in. Those I've done plenty of. I've never sold one of these, but I've done plenty of, they call it an entombment when your casket goes in. Done plenty of those. Man. So the piece we're working on right now is nowhere near the scale of this. We're working on one that's got four columns uh, that are actually quite a bit more detailed than these columns, but it's just the four of them. And I think, you know, our whole piece will probably be, I don't know, maybe half this size. I think it's only like six foot tall where, you know, this with all the steps that are all solid granite are is probably closer to 12 foot tall very very cool all unpolished georgia gray stone you know, all the handwork around these ledgers that took some time another couple of cool very tall pieces i've never seen one like that Got some cool pillar work on the sides here, shape carve along the detail areas, some cool scrolled ends. This, I've never seen anything like this. The Joel Hunt family. Got a very unique styled bench there and I don't know what the idea of having this I wonder if something sat in there at one point. It's kind of a little walk-in area. Similar to this where you've got a roof hangover. That's a giant boulder. It's a pretty unique piece. That script style engraving. You can see where the sun's helping this one. So sun will help make it to where the mold and lichen and things like that, it'll kind of burn it off. So the front of this one doesn't look too bad. You go around to the back that's in the shade. Pretty dirty on the back. You got quite a few personal mausolea over here. And then this thing, man. <laughs> So again, that's probably 12, 15 feet wide. Um, and then it's got that hand tooled last name in there. Another pretty unique personal mausoleum. Pretty neat. This one looks like it's got, this one might be all marble. 
It looks like the top's marble. The doors are certainly marble. This, these fluted areas with the, that shape carving, uh, that's all marble. So if that was cleaned up, that would look pretty sharp. Marble that big will take some time before it erodes away, uh, but eventually the acid rain and that's gonna just eat away at that marble like you see in the old marble pieces out in cemeteries. We generally don't recommend the use of marble. So a couple more personal mausolea. That's a cool stone with the apex top. Yeah, they've got big pieces everywhere. You can hear the trimmer in the background. Apologize for that. It's over by some benches. I did that for many years. Pretty cool. This is a cool one with a uh, relief carving. Might be Jesus praying at the Garden of Gethsemane, maybe? That's all cut out of one block of stones. Pretty cool. Might be an older piece of Georgia gray. See how brown it is. They might irrigate here too. That might be an issue. Um, they might water down here. There's a cool etched scene. They've even got Georgia gray steps coming up. Uh, this one you can see all the lichen attached to it. So your granite's gonna absorb just like any other stone would. You can see the difference of the color of the granite. That's just, it's moisture in the bottom part of that it hasn't evaporated yet, but all this lichen. It's been there for a long time. It usually doesn't attach very easily to the polished area, but it probably started right there in those uh, hand sculpted flowers. So there's a hand etching, hand etched and colored. Pretty cool scene. There's a nice angel. Oh, I can't tell. That was all lasered, it looks like. Those little stars there, though, are definitely done by hand. Yeah, that was I, everything on here is lasered, even the name and dates. Oh. Some pretty cool, kind of, they make it look like bricks with the wild roses going up the side and some regular roses here going up the side all shape carved well, here's a big seam you got a family tree on there with kids names that one looks like it was hand done there's your problem with the black I was talking about on one of my last videos all the grass that gets stuck to it see a lot of these out here I wish we did more of these this is just a different type of top that you can choose uh, doesn't change much as far as you know setting or anything but that's an apex top so that one's got it that one's got it that one's got it got a couple of flat tops back here and you see a lot of the serp tops that's probably the most common this is a serpentine top uh, like Barrett back there is a serpentine top.
I was just about to say I didn't know where I was at. I didn't know where I parked. It's getting hot out. Got my hoodie on still, but it's in the mid 60s. That's a big one right there. So here again, another one that I haven't seen this shape before. So I like to take pictures of these, you know, what I consider a unique shape, just so, you know, we have them for reference if somebody's, you know, discussing a project, we can pull back on some of these pictures. And uh, we've used them in the past, you know, we use them for reference and then people see them and they want them and then we make the piece, so it's pretty fun. It's pretty wild, his arm broke off. So Jesus was added, so this is a jet black piece and then Jesus more than likely is out uh, Georgia Gray and is somebody probably messed with it and broke that. So that's like a semi relief of Jesus holding the cross there. So there's another cemetery I drove by that was enormous. Might go try to find that one. Go through there as well. We also, I also went by uh, Keystone Granite Company. I'll probably try to video the outside of that. It's a large, another large supplier down here. A cool cool piece I like the vases and the style obviously this is a pretty unique tree of life over here I like that Bailey with that apex top. It's like there used to be something there. All right. So this granite quarry just closed. That was called Salisbury Pink. It was from the town of Salisbury in either North or South Carolina. I don't remember which one, but. Just got notified, I think last year that that quarry was closing. So, little tour of Forest Hills Memorials <laughs> Cemetery. So, we're gonna hop in the truck. We'll go drive by uh, Keystone, and then, like I said, try to find that other cemetery. It's just about 12 o'clock here. My my time so messed up with the recent time change and then I crossed the time barrier on the way here so now I feel like I'm two hours off but here's my love calling so I'm gonna let you go I'm videoing Keystone Memorials as I leave Forest Hills Memorials so Keystone is gigantic So I just got done at my uh, granite supply house and I'm out at another cemetery here in Alberton and just pull 
pulled up to this uh, absolutely beautiful family mausoleum. So uh, this is a, it's a 24 crypt personal mausoleum. So it looks like the Burton family here owns this, but holy cow. Granite stairs. This is something else. Their own light in here and their own hand carved statue in the back. You got lights outside. Man. Something else. Hmm. Um, and then if that wasn't enough, their next door neighbors have the same thing. So this one's got a gate on it. The Moon family. Wow. Another 24 crypt mausoleum. Doesn't look like anybody's entombed in this one yet. But the size of the granite on here, man, it is wild. Can't say I've ever sold one of these but they've got all kinds of mausoleums along the outer edge here I'll uh I was just talking to Beth on the phone so now that I'm done talking to her on the phone I'll show you guys some of these uh cool pieces I mean you can kind of see them through here in the background they've got some just absolute giant pieces of stone out here as well so let's take a tour so we're doing a little bit of a... New text message from Beth Kennedy. <laughs> we're uh, doing a little bit of a truck tour because I'm still a little bit used to the cold and it's pushing 80 degrees outside, which feels great, but pretty hot. So there's a pretty cool pillar upright memorial. pretty cool stone over there and then there's quite a few of these throughout the whole cemetery where you've got your just your personal mausoleum they're kind of sporadic throughout the cemetery and then along that first uh, little area I went through must be where they're kind of allocating space for the rest of them to go because there was a bunch of them all down that road there's another lot right there where it's a nice uh, family stone in the middle and then everybody's got a full grave ledger but there's a lot of really cool memorials with a lot of really cool handwork those flowers there are just sticking out of that monument right there it was a really a uh, 3d effect to them so very cool i'll uh i'm going to continue to drive around if i see i'm just kind of hopping out and taking pictures of uh pieces that are unique and cool and have some real real nice uh handwork done to them and uh so if i see something else that jumps out i'll uh pop back on here and show it to you all right, so here's the road I drove in on first, and I'll just video, I'm not gonna walk it again, but uh, I'll just video for you this whole row of mausoleum. So this one's a cool one. Looks like it's got a bronze door. Uh, that granite, what I'm familiar with calling it is Ocean Wave. Uh, it's got a pretty cool, pretty cool look to it. This one is not a mausoleum, but a very nice, family monument and then all of these so there's a French Creek two-person uh, two crypt mausoleum here's a French Creek single crypt mausoleum there's another two-person I think that one looks like autumn rose which is no longer available uh, another two-person looks like Missouri red 
Here's a Georgia Gray, two person with a French Creek door, some gold lettering. Now here's another one of the walk-in style. Uh, so that's a one, two, three crypt it looks like. So three caskets can fit in there. And it's got stained glass in the back. Some pretty cool ones. And then there's a couple of little benches here. So these are this personal benches that um, hold the cremated remains. There's a black mausoleum and another light one. Looks like looks like a Cold Springs granite. And as we go up, here's a smaller walk-in style mausoleum. Nothing's like the other two. Those 24. <laughs> those 24 uh, units were were something else those are the biggest biggest family crypts I've ever seen so Oglesby that's a cool stone cool granite another walk-in style stained glass on the back looks like French Creek's pretty uh, popular with these this one's got the stairs going up nice columns on the front and then this one looks like another Missouri red got the French Creek doors with the gray swirls through them this one's fairly common uh, the gray unit with the black door in the middle that one you see quite a bit uh, I see a lot of these out here so they've got like these little estate lots where they've got granite or marble curbing and then this one's got a columbarium for four cremations to go inside uh, here's another two-person uh, mausoleum all gray this time and I thought this was kind of cool too right up here they have uh, these family this is very similar to what I want to do on our family lot and get some family uh, niche banks so these are nine person niche banks so nine cremations will fit into these units takes up a pretty small footprint you know to allow for nine burials to um, to take uh, place so I like that idea so we're coming up here to a couple more personal mausoleums so here's another one another black one all black it's got some hand etchings on there it looks like gold leaf and then this one's pretty cool so we call this granite either a dark cloud gray or uh, there's a quarry in Minnesota that has this dark gray too um, very nice has a nice contrast now here's a little bit of a different style so this two-person mausoleum uh, we'll call it a stacked mausoleum so instead of being side by side they're vertical uh, so it takes up less space on the ground to be able to do that obviously another two-person side by side and then we got a couple more singles down here here's a gray single uh, mausoleum a fully Looks like a fully hand etched, mm, yeah, fully hand etched uh, door to it. She was very young. And then here's the last one of the row. So another single looks like, so for a single you can still fit a couple of cremations in there obviously. So I would guess that maybe one of those individuals were uh, full body burial maybe one was cremated so uh, just an update of something I just learned while I was at Miles Supply so I went there during lunch during their lunch and they had a note on the door that they were having uh, OSHA there and I was talking to the guy uh, the rep there from Miles Supply you know about our YouTube channel and things like that and I might not have great news um, so our location for the school of hard rocks tomorrow has changed um, the place that was gonna host us is no longer gonna host us um, for whatever the reason is he had an idea of why but we won't go into that um, so we had to change venues and he's not sure so he's not sure my camera just cut off again so He's not sure uh, if I'm gonna be allowed to video. So I'm still gonna ask, but there's a possibility 
uh, that they may not want me to because of that four letter word that everybody's afraid of um, which I understand so we'll see how it goes but that four letter word is OSHA and um, we'll see what they say but there's there's no guarantee might have done all of this taping we'll see where that goes when I'm editing this but uh, there's a chance it seems that we might not get uh, some of that fun video awesome video that I was hoping to get so we'll play that by ear uh, and we'll know more in the morning um, but until then I think I'm gonna sign off for the rest of the day here I'm gonna stay in the cemetery for a little bit and uh, continue to look at some of these cool pieces and uh, we will see you all in the morning.